Hey there, I'm Joe Weems. Before we get into the video, I want to remind you about NGConf 2023 happening in Salt Lake City, Utah on June 14th and 15th. Head over to ngconf.org to check out the speakers, check out the talks, and to get your ticket before they all sell out. We'll see you there. Hello everyone. I'm a little nervous and so they said they would be okay if I threw this sock at you. Um, but first I have to ask you a very important question. Who here likes Lord of the Rings? Raise your hand. All right, this person raised their hand the highest. I'm sorry, I hope, I apologize. I do have insurance. Okay. Um, Anyway, who's excited about watching Rings of Power this weekend? Yeah? All right. Few people. Here's another one over here. <laughs> Ooh, that was close. Okay, we're going to be talking about YNX, 20 reasons in 20 minutes, and we just wasted two, so let's go. This is my good friend, Michael Madsen, and if you haven't met him yet, he is a bundle of joy. He has been an NXer, as we have termed it, since 2018. He is a application architect at Cisco. And a fun fact about Michael is that he wrecked his mountain bike when he was younger and the whole front of his torso going 45 miles an hour while riding the Coca Pelly Trail, 142 miles of purest agony. Yeah. And this is Eric Slack. My good friend, he's been an NXer since 2018 as well. He's a technical leader at Cisco. And uh, fun fact about him, he really loves the horror genre and enjoys playing a video game called Dead by Daylight. Yes. So with this talk, we are going to examine the benefits of using a monorepo through the lens of the failures of Sauron. This is going to be so much fun, all right? Um, the target audience, the people that will enjoy this or be able to benefit from this, and you might be one of them, so don't, don't put your head down. You really might be. It's going to be you engineers who are potentially going to add NX to your monorepos at work or to your applications at work. And you need to convince both your coworkers and your leaders that this is a good idea. And yeah, we'll get to that in a second. But what are you going to get out of this? Well, there's a couple of things. All right. The first thing is we are giving away our slides to you so you can make the same presentation to them that we're making to you now, but hopefully you have more than 20 minutes to talk about it. Um, you'll also note that our slides are themed Lord of the Rings. These are more professional. <laughs> the next one is we're giving away, well, we have already written an article together about this exact topic. So if you'd like to read in more depth afterwards, you can totally do that. So go ahead, snap a, sh a photo or memorize it. To start, uh, what is a monorepo? Monorepo, uh, it holds more than one application, project, or lib. Um, those projects don't have to be related. Uh, there's typically a high number of commits and pull requests in those repos because it's really a lot of code, right? And then uh, it requires some tooling to mitigate the problems that you would have with like a monolithic repository. <clears throat> so what is NX? It's the next generation build system and it ha with first class monorepo support and powerful integrations. So NX is really the heart of the monorepo. It's that tooling that separates you and gives you like efficiencies where like monoliths, which monorepos are compared to a lot, lack. So NX is the heart of what, um, what makes this work. So you're going to run into a million reasons why not to switch to a monorepo, and a lot of naysayers like Boromir. Um, but with NX, you really can simply switch to a monorepo. So next, we're going to jump into those 20 things. Uh, we've separated them out into sections. This first section um, is called Develop Efficiently at Scale. Uh, so let's, uh, let's jump into it. <clears throat> Number one is more granular libraries. Sauron didn't realize that his libraries just didn't work that well together. If the elephant library went down, it would bring down the rest of his code army too. With a monorepo, it's very easy to break out your code and keep libraries focused and efficient. Libraries should be, have a single purpose. Libraries should be easy to read and understand. The barrier to make libraries needs to be low. 
because if it's not low, you know, without a mono repo, it can be a challenge to make a new library. You have to get a new repo, you know, uh, get a build pipeline set up, perhaps a place to deploy something. So if there are barriers to creating libraries, what do people do? They tend to blow existing libraries with code that just doesn't belong there. Uh, for number two, we have one repo to rule them all, especially your dependencies. So this is a really important part of the mono repo. Um, and Saren didn't realize that. Uh, he did a good thing using the one ring, but he didn't make a way to keep track of the one ring. Uh, in X, we have one package.json file to reference for all of the dependencies. Uh, you almost had it there, Saren. Um, we can see an example of like, the danger of having different dependencies in the early days of Node and um, NPM. Before we had like, package lock or shrink wrap, you could go to build for production and it would build with a different set of dependencies than you had on your developer machine because the, the versions were not fixed. And it turned into a lot of time spent trying to figure out what happened there. Um, now we have package lock and now we have monorepo. And so with the monorepo, you're actually fixing that version for all of your apps, not just for the single app. And with that, you have more of an expectation of how the app should act with the versions of libraries that you have. And that saves you a ton of time. And another big time saver is that you upgrade one time for everything in the repo. So that's huge. Well said. <laughs> Next thing, uh, monorepo supports many frameworks. Um, in a monorepo, all the code lives together in harmony, just like the races of Middle Earth. Sauron should have worked harder to divide them like his apps and libs had been without NX. So all, all these languages you see on the screen here, there are plugins for NX for all of these so that you can use all these frameworks in the same monorepo. <laughs> That's pretty cool. The next one, number four, discoverability. Sauron could only look at one application at a time. I find that super limiting. With NX, everything is in your field of view. You can search across everything your app needs right from your IDE. You can easily perform search and replaces if you need to and affect the entire thing, sweeping changes. You know exactly what's being affected by your changes and what tests are breaking. So the number five, build configuration or build unification. Sauron had so many different systems, his method of scaling seemed to be, let's just show up to the fight and fight. Look how that turned out though. Some unification of processes would have allowed him to optimize and correct problems for all parts of his massive army. Using builders standardizes the build process so everything can be built the same way. You can now have one standard rather than a mix of different strategies such as gulp and grunt here and webpack there. The next section is the things about the intelligent build system and the distributed caching. So first we have visualizing dependencies. Uh, Sauron gave a lot of autonomy to his forces, but he failed to properly oversee them and calculate the impacts of one failing library over others. He, <coughs> he should have used NX and taken advantage of the depth graph to see what libraries he depended on. For this, I'm just gonna show the depth graph a little bit because uh, some people just don't know about it, um, but it's very powerful and there have been some updates recently that made it even better. Um, right here we see these, um, the red boxes are things that were affected by the code that was just put into this repo. Uh, so you can easily see what's affected by your changes. Also, you can see like this shared product state library, it's used by all of these uh, other libraries. So you can easily see where those dependencies are lying. And if you see something that doesn't make sense, if you just click on this line, it'll tell you what files it's used in so you can go investigate what's going on there. Um, same thing, you can focus in on something if you need a more detailed view um, or even follow the path from one point to another. There's a lot of really good tools here to help you identify how your code works with each other. <coughs> That was super cool. I love the depth graph. And something that comes right off of that is the affected commands. NX is well known for these affected commands. Sauron did not want to build his mono repo because he heard it would be a huge waste of his time, consuming all, all his time to run tests, build changes. By the time he was done, maybe some eagle would have just dropped a ring on Mount Doom and he would have been done for it. But he failed to realize the problems of mono repos can be completely mitigated. Test and lint only the projects which were affected by your changes, saving you and your CI process so much time and money. Building on top of that, we have distributed caching. So 
Sauron, he centralized his plans from his two towers. This significantly slowed how quickly he could update his plans and communicate his orders. Uh, with an X, we use distributed caching. This goes hand in hand with the affected commands we just talked about. So linting, building, testing, end-to-end -end testing, all those things, you can run it, if you run it on a developer machine, the results of that are cached on your distributed cache, and the CI doesn't have to run those. No other developer has to run those. It makes it so you only have to run those tasks once across your entire organization, which is pretty awesome. <clears throat> Next thing, detect problems sooner. How did Sauron not realize that Frodo, Sam, and Gollum were in Mordor with the One Ring? <laughs> it's, it's insane. I don't know what he was doing. Similarly, we have, uh, if we look at how traditionally we would build apps, um, if you have a library, an NPM library, and that NPM library has a problem affecting app two, uh, the typical process is to go fix the bug in the library and then update app two and you get the changes and you're good to go. Well, what happens in six months when app one and three decide, hey, we need to update our dependencies and uh, there is a error um, with that fix? Well, now they've got to investigate where that error came from, and then they'll come to Eric and be like, hey, Eric, why'd you make this change six months ago? What'd you do? And he'll be like, I don't know. <laughs> uh, with a monorepo, you, you cut out all that time, because if you have a pro problem, you go update the library in the monorepo, and what happens? Well, you update all three apps as well. And if there's a bug in any of those three apps, you'll learn that in build time or while testing is happening, but you're, you're learning it while it's still in the developer's hands and still in the de developer's mind, which saves you a ton of time and a, <laughs> and a lot of hassle from a lot of people. <clears throat> Next section, uh, using modern tooling. The f number 10, code generation generators, aka schematics. If only Sauron was able to generate new libraries at the push of a button for all of his apps, perhaps he'd have a bigger army. So generators, also known as schematics in the Angular community, thanks to the Angular CLI and the Angular team. I hear some claps, that's totally appropriate. Thank you, <laughs> Angular team. Woo! Okay, generators are really useful for generating code. If you don't know what one is, that's okay. It allows you to instantly create code that will exact if, uh, act the exact same way in one or multiple files. It also happens to be that Narwhal has built in, built, has built in schematics that will, or generators that come with NX when you use it. They've also created a process around how and where to build these generators into the workspaces that get generated. And you can share your custom generators across your organization with ease. And for those of you with large organizations, that's a big deal. Where did that go? <laughs> Number 11, updating at the push of a button. Sauron had a hard time keeping his libraries updated to the latest technologies. If only he had the NX migrate command. These elves get it. NX migrate command allows you to update both your dependencies and your code base. NG update. Other, other, your other dependencies, they can all be updated, and this could be the most undersold super feature of NX. Next we have custom lint rules. Uh, Balrog stay in the basement. So NX has made it very easy to write custom lint rules specific to your monorepo needs. So these lint rules, um, we have an example of the code there on the side. You can govern like how your libraries are used inside of the modern repo, what kind of libraries your apps can depend on, all those things, and it's super easy to set up and, uh, and to make it the way you need. Uh, also, NX has first class support for ESLint and Prettier. It just makes uh, everything you do with linting really easy. <coughs> Next we have standardization. If Sauron had just created, army, created an army of Nazgul, he wouldn't have lost the last battle. Uh, standardization is super important for large organizations. Um, in, a mon in a mono repo, the tooling applies across the repo with a single set of configuration files, and that's a big deal, especially with cross-team mobility and things like that. It's hard to keep a bunch of repos on the same standard, even if you have shared ways to get those standards. It, it is difficult, uh, but now, same standards across the repo. You can go to another section, portion of the repo, completely different projects, and see all the familiar standards you know and have an expe expectation of what's expected. <clears throat> you mean one Angular app is going to look like exactly like the another Angular app? I'm in. 
fully, developer, fully integrated development experience. And in this, I'm talking about, of course, the NX console. Sauron loved the command line, but he didn't have time to really look up what all those commands could do. In the NX console, which is an extension you can use with VS Code right now for free, it would have shown him a neat GUI right there. So the NX console allows you to see all your generators, it allows you to see all the options for those, and allows you to run NX commands and see what ones are available. You don't have to go digging through the docs. Next we have module federation friendly, and this is a very popular topic these days. Um, the question is, why did all the Nazgul have to be deployed together? Should you really need all nine of them looking for one hobbit in the same place, at the same time, all of the time? With module federation, you can deploy your Nazgul independently however you want to. Um, module federation in the monorepo, extremely easy. Uh, they've done a great job of giving you schematics to set it up for you and giving you examples of what it looks like when it is set up properly. And it's super easy to just get all the benefits that you want out of module federation just in the monorepo. It's the easiest way to set it up. Uh, <coughs> very powerful. Next section, NX is brought to you by the community. Sauron probably could have convinced more types of folks to work for him, as there is a crisis of finding talent, but he was limited by his own imagination. Well, NX doesn't suffer from that problem because there are over 70 plugins created and counting, and 18 of them, last time I checked, are, officially, are official and maintained by Narwhal themselves. That means the rest of them are maintained by you lovely people. And what's more is you can go find a full list of them on nx.dev slash community, and you can go maybe create or extend some of the ones that are currently there. Number 17, it is open source. We love open source, don't we? Open sourced plotting is far more inclusive and scalable than coming up with all those schemes yourself, Sauron. Everyone loves open source because when you need support, you can easily ask the library creators in an issue on GitHub or even create a PR yourself and fix the dang thing. It's possible to review the inner workings of that code too because of transparency of open source. You can go check it out and maybe even find a way to offer improvements. Also, there is a killer Slack community, which I have joined, and you can join for free. You can go to their website, and you can get involved with the other people doing NX in your community, and Narwhal's folks are very uh, active there as well, I've found. Um, next up, it is very well documented and supported. All the secrecy worked against Sauron. If he'd made his library creators perfectly aware of how he wanted things done, maybe they wouldn't, would have done a much better job of conquering Middle Earth. NX is, a very, is very popular and it's backed by the company Narwhal. Documentation is pretty good and it's always being improved upon. Also, there are many sample projects that you can refer to that may be just what you need to help you uh, get your application development up to the next level. Put all this together and what you get is a faster and easier to build apps, easier to enforce standards, CICD that is a breeze because of the standardization. You get to de detect problems in your app sooner. It increases development efficiency and experience and builds a better product than you could have done without the monorepo and good tooling. <coughs> and uh, number 20 because we say so. But, but so does Cisco, Microsoft, Google, Airbnb, Twitter, Uber, all of them use monorepos to great success. Um, some of them are using NX, some of them are using other options, but all of them offer that tooling and NX is the easiest there is. <coughs> yeah, I guess they're pretty cool too. <laughs> <coughs> you can go ahead and follow us on Twitter. This is mmadsen87 uh, and I'm at Eric with a K underscore slack. And I also want to invite you to come listen to the podcast that I co-produce called The Angular Experience that teaches you all the things to succeed as an engineer in life and career beyond just the coding parts which you learned here today. Thank you so much for attending our talk. I regret to announce this is the end. I'm going now. I bid you all a fond farewell. Goodbye. Goodbye.